Welcome to Conceptual and Regulatory Framework. So, at the very first task, what we're going to do then is we're going to focus upon the regulatory framework. So that means, depending on which country that you are in, and also depending upon uh, which stock exchange or at least your company to, you're required to follow different accounting standards. So some of the countries, for example in China mainland, the accounting standards that you need to follow is just to be a mix of the Chinese accounting standards and the IFRS. But if you list your company in the UK, for example, London Stock Exchange, you're required to follow the full IFRS. So that means by which accounting standards you're going to follow, that would depending upon your country's Companies Act. And also the international accounting standards, sometimes there will be a full adoption of the IFRS. So the latest name for the international accounting standards is called the IFRS. And that means for the international accounting standards, just to be old name for those standards. The new name for that is the International Financial Reporting Standards, which is the IFRS. Okay, so and also the stock exchange will have its own requirements as well. So that's all you need to know. So, but the question is, we are studying this particular paper and we are focusing on the IFRS. So first of all, how can we develop the IFRS? If you turn back to your, on to your next page of your notes, you will see how the IAS, the previous International Accounting Standards, and the current IFRS are developed. So we're going to use the mnemonics for this, it's called a DEPT. So let me just to put that down here. T has no meaning. So first of all, we've got the advice given by the advisory council. So the advisory council is acting as the marketing department to perfectionists or business development department to perfectionists. So the advisory council is such a department to connect with many of these companies in the real life and asking their opinion of what sorts of problems that they have and how, what's their view on our current IFRS and how the IFRS can be further developed. So, for example, the advisory council may ask many of its companies and experts advice on the current, for example, lease accounting standards IS number 17. We will be replaced by the IFR 16 very soon. So, advisory council is just to act as the marketing department to uh, give advice to the IASB. So, for example, the advisory council would then say, Okay, so the current IS number 17 lease accounting standard has some problems in that. And has saying to the IASB, which is the International Accounting Standards Board, the IASB would then develop something called the discussion paper. So that means the ISB would simply say, right, you said, and many of these companies in the real world has commented, on the current IS number 17 lease accounting standards and through our investigation we know that there has been uh, quite a lot of uh, fraudulent transactions happening in the real life companies and that's the reason why we are thinking about to replace the I-17 with the new IFR-16. That's good, that's great, it's no problem and then before we do that I will publish the discussion paper, allowing the public to comment on the proposed IFR 16. So the ISB now would, uh, I mean, follows the advice given by the advisory council to see which accounting standards we're going to improve first before the second one. And then the ISP would develop a set of accounting standards and then issue the discussion paper of how we're going to improve this and so on. So when we receive, from the ISP's point of view, when we receive all of these published comments from the outside, we then develop something called the exposure draft. 
And that means based upon the discussion paper, we then further improve our accounting standards based upon your comments. We're going to improve it, improve it, improve that and so on. And then we develop the exposure draft. It's the drafted final financial uh, final IFRS that will be adopted very soon. But at this particular stage, if ISB finds out there will be problems in there, the ISB issues the exposure draft again, the ISB uh, would like to receive the public's comment on these particular standards again to see which area we can further improve and so on. And after we finalise all those accounting standards and so we find there's no problem with that, we can publish that. So final stage is going to publish the accounting standards by the IASB. But when we publish the accounting standards, it's not perfect. It's simply because the accounting standard perhaps is quite limited on scope. And that means maybe it would be quite clear in one industry rather than the other. For example, the education industry knows how to apply these accounting standards uh, in its operation. But some of the companies such as the financial services industry, insurance companies and so on, they're not sure how to do that, how to apply these accounting standards into their operation, in their, into publishing their financial statements and so on. So if that's the case then, the IFRS Interpretation Committee will come into being. So the IFRS Interpretation Committee will come into being and explaining how these accounting standards will be applied in your own industry, in your own uh, particular situation and so on. Okay, so we see quite a lot of this uh, weird word, Advisory Council, IESB and IFRS uh, Interpretation Committee. So let's turn the notes back to the previous page of the regulatory framework, we'll see quite a lot of these worthy departments within the IFRS, uh, within the IFRS, this particular uh, body here, this organisation here. So for example, we've got the IFRS Foundation, so what does that mean? It means that the IFRS Foundation would be acting as a role to provide the finance to each of its departments to support their work to the IFRS Interpretation Committee, to ISB, and also to the Advisory Council, providing them with money to support their operations. At the same time, the IFRS Foundation is also acting as a role to appoint the members into each of its departments as well, to the Interpretation Committee, to ISB as well as the Advisory Council. But remember, the IFRS, this particular organisation, is not a profit making organisation. And that means where does this money come from? Well, the answer for that is it comes from the IFAC, it's the International Federation of Accountants. So there will be many of these accounting bodies, including ACCA, CIMA, ICA, UW, CPA, and so on and so forth, would be acting as the member here to form into IFAC and providing money to the IFAC, and the IFAC would then provide the money to the IFAS Foundation. The IFAS Foundation will provide this money to each of these departments to develop the accounting standards helping the uh, organisation and companies to grow. And the next question is, where does the money come from from IFAC's point of view? Of course, for example, coming from ACCA. But ACCA is again, it's a non-profit making organisation. Where does this money come from? Okay, ACCA has its own members, yeah? And students, for example. Students would pay the fees to ACCA and ACCA would pay the fees for IFAC and IFA will pay the fees for IFAS Foundation and so on. So as you can see, we've got IFAS Foundation, ISB is the International Accounting Standards Board. 
and also we've got advisory council acting as the marketing department and so on and also the IFRS interpretation committee so that's how the IFRS is developed and that's all we need to know so um, that's all about the regulatory framework and now let's focus upon the conceptual framework APC accounting for your future